Hi, Brockton residents and business owners. It's Mayor Robert Sullivan, and I wanted to welcome you back to uh, the 45th, believe it or not, episode of Our Brockton. And the title speaks for itself, Our Brockton. It's our community. It's our home. Uh, today, it's really my honor and privilege to have um, on uh, as guests uh, Chief Brenda Perez of the Brockton Police Department and Chief Brian Nadelli of the Fire Department. Chiefs, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. both thank of you. you. You've both been on this before. I want to thank you. Chief Perez, you just uh, celebrated your one-year anniversary as chief. Yes. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you. And thank great you. leadership. And uh, Chief thank Nardelli, you. you're at two years? Correct. Again, thank you yep. for your leadership Absolutely. as well. And again, um, everybody knows who you are, and you're from the city of Brockton, Brockton Public Schools, but you're leading the specific departments. And why I thought it'd be important to have both chiefs on today is that it's a collaborative approach. Always been a collaborative approach since I've been mayor, right? We're better together. Um, one thing that both of you have been brilliant on and your team has been brilliant on is working together on the fireworks task force this summer. And I thought it would be great to educate and inform our, our viewership on what we're doing together, number one, right? Because it's not fire department here, police department here, it's the synergy is real mm -hmm. um, and the mayor's office is somewhere in the, in the middle as well. But at the end of the day, um, I'd love for you to just share, I'm gonna start with Chief Perez, some of the things that you're doing um, this summer, um, the task force, again, with the fireworks has been great. You also are doing the mini bikes ATV task force, and you're doing a lot right now, Chief Perez. So I'm going to go to you, and then I'm going to come to you, Chief. Thank you. Chief. So when it comes to, thank you, Mayor. When it comes to the fireworks task force, as you know, it started in, it was established in 2020 with the police fire in the U.S. Marshal's Office that has since expanded to include the state police, the Department of Fire Services, and the MBTA. Um, and we're looking to proactively um, target those areas that we know have um, historically have illegal fireworks. Um, our, the team goes out, they speak to residents door to door um, in trying to um, eliminate and mitigate that issue. And one example we had this year, we had a, an address, a particular address that always has uh, fireworks. The team was able to go out to identify the people, speak to them, educate them right on how this is not going to be tolerated. And this year, they didn't have them. Good. So we're constantly going out there, constantly um, trying to address the issues as, we, as they're reported to us or we gain knowledge of them as a team anyone so it's it's been a it's been a great addition um since 2019 to 2020 we had actually from 2019 to 2020 seven times more um fireworks go off than than 2019 but in 2021 we had a 78 percent decrease um, in fireworks uh, going off in the city. So it's more to pre-pandemic levels. Um, and so that's also attributed, the team uh, really believes it's attributed to basically us going out door to door and informing the public, informing the residents that, you know, this is illegal, we're not gonna tolerate it and taking every action that we can proactively. We also have a tip line, as you know, yeah. um, that. That's for anybody that's selling. Uh, if anybody has any knowledge of fireworks being sold or in possession of, they can call 508-941-0244. You know, I think at the end of the day, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? That's the old saying. 78%, that decrease is a success. It's a success all day long. I think one thing that um, all of us are in agreement, and first of all, fireworks are legal in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. right? It drives us nuts when the New, York, New Hampshire companies are doing direct mailing citywide or the billboard mm -hmm. that you see. And I've had the law department look into that. Um, unfortunately, we aren't able to prohibit that. Um, but I will tell you that 78% decrease, we're getting back to pre-pandemic levels are unbelievable. I also know um, that again the police and the fire department working together with some of our other partners that you mentioned mm -hmm. chief we've confiscated a good amount of fireworks mm -hmm. as well what happens when the, con the they're confiscated like people have asked me mayor what, what do you do do you bring them to your house and light, light them off like where, where do they go <laughs> what, do, what do we do with them so i'm going to refer to yeah you. that's fine yeah so the state police the uh, department of fire services usually handles that the disposal of them disposal. and that's where the partnership like chief perez said works out great when we work with the department of fire services those are all state troopers um, so they have a broader range, so we can do the mitigation here, and then they can take care of the problem afterwards, which makes a big difference for us, because what are we going to do with them? We'll store them until they can come and get them, right. but they always come out and get them and for so us. They, they yes, them. we have locked we'll, locked secured areas at, at, um, at fire prevention where we can secure those. $3,000 worth of 
fireworks this year we've taken off this, the road, but a lot of, and we've, we've put it out on social media. I think to that point, we talk about the tip line, a lot of things. I think one of the nice things this year too, is we, we put out a pretty hard social media spread. Yes, you did. guys did as well, as well as police and fire. We put the same message out there. And I think it sent a message to let the folks know that we're out there. This is illegal. Police and fire are working together. We're out there to actually make sure that no one's going to get hurt. Unfortunately, we did have a firework go off in one young man's face this year. Um, he was treated and released from the hospital. We also um, um, had a few fires. One was in a dumpster. Um, that was probably the largest fire. But I think, you know, compared to previous years, I think we've... I think people know we're out there and we're looking for this stuff. And it's, you know, it's a danger to everyone. Not, so not only the... the danger physically and medically but also you know think about how many veterans we've had come back from from overseas over the years and now we have veterans in this city who you know these bangs are going off in the sky that that there's a there's a, a mental health component that goes along That's with that too true. that we really have to keep an eye on and if we can re prevent that for some guy a woman who's been fighting for this country in this city um, and, and, and protecting their, their, their livelihood, make sure that they're safe in other ways, not just the medical part of it. Yeah, so. and I think at the end of the day, so we know it's illegal, right? We know it's a huge quality of life issue, mm -hmm. right? I mean, our, our veterans, mm -hmm. our senior citizens, mm -hmm. um, our, our pets as well. Yes. You know, you ever see a dog, mm -hmm. one of our cats, yes. when a firework goes off. So, uh, and you know, and, and, and young families with young children, but I, I just want to applaud you both. Um, I know when I became mayor, um, I was working with uh, Chief Gomes and, mm -hmm. and Chief Williams at the time, and you guys have actually run with it and actually in increased it and enhanced it. Um, I'm going to go to you, Chief Nardelli. Um, so we talked about the task force for the yep. fireworks. What are some of the other things you want to share about the, the fire services and the fire department? So we have a lot going on, um, which is all good stuff. Yep. Um, we, as everyone's seen, we've we've put on a number of in the last year we put on 25 new firefighters. 16 of them. Was that the, number 25? 25. That's awesome. 25. Awesome. 25. Um, and we actually have a few more in the pipeline right now, getting ready to hire. Um, but but um, out of that 25, 16 through a safer grant that um, Deputy Chief. Albany is our grant writer, and he does an incredible job. He's phenomenal. He, when you look at when you look at the bigger picture, and you look at um, the piece of fire apparatus we received, now we have 16 bodies to put on that piece of apparatus. He just wrote a grant for training for more training in the department. He does an incredible job with grant writing, and, and uh, it just it amazes me sometimes. He's done it for a while, but he's getting he's fine tuning, and he's getting even better, which is awesome. So he's he's done a great job with that. We have those personnel in place. We've been able to put um, the rescue in place, um, and that is that's made a difference already. We've seen. The efficiency of the operation now. Again, I mentioned it before. We had we had our technical rescue equipment spread out on five different pieces of equipment. It just wasn't efficient. Now we not only got it all into one truck that we got through a grant that Deputy Albany's got us, but then also the staffing we got um, through that grant. So now it's all heading in the right direction. Our first rescue, I think you probably saw on social media, we were able to get guys down. Um, at the sewage treatment plant, we were able to save a, a small animal out of a, a hole. Now that's it not- deer, right? It was a deer, yeah. it was, it was a fawn. And, yep. and it, with, the, with the collaboration with Animal Control and Brockton Police, things worked out great. great. So all good stuff, it's all good stuff. We, we're, I'll tell you, we've really led the charge with the lithium ion battery stuff right Explain now. Explain that to people, because they don't really, I, yeah. you see it on TV yeah. all the time, and you've been really running behind the scenes on this, not just in Brockton, but Commonwealth wide. Yes. It's a serious threat. The city, we, we, we knew that this was gonna be a problem. Um, there, there's, the, I think with the electric energy, it's all great, it's green, it's wonderful, but right now, it's almost outpacing the, the safety aspect of it. Um, and uh, about a year ago, Deputy Chief, uh, uh, Kevin Galligan and Deputy Chief Jeff Marchetti went down to a class at the Rock at the FDNY Fire Academy, and they because they're dealing with it, they have a big problem down there. Um, we've seen it here. We had a multiple alarm fire back in the winter um, in a house. They had a number of batteries. What happens with these batteries is if they're not charged correctly, if they're charged with the wrong charger where it doesn't shut them off in time, if they're damaged, they can get what's called thermal runaway, and then they get promulgation. What happens is those batteries, they're small batteries, and they go and go and go and go and go, and next thing you know, there's multiple batteries. It almost acts as like a, pro when, when, when they release and they get damaged, it almost creates like a propane natural gas environment where now that gas, and you can find all these videos on YouTube. We've worked greatly with Pat Hill and the DPW, the DPW commission yes. and working with him. We've, we got a grant this year through the Department of Fire Services. We were the only one in the state that actually went after this grant. Now this grant is out there. Again, Deputy Chief Albany's wrote this grant, but a lot of music for other things. We knew the issue with the lithium ion batteries. We were able to transition, get that grant money to be able to do that with the, with the, um, with that. And it, and it's worked out great because now that relationship, we had a meeting about four months ago with Pat Hill, uh, and Ernie and those guys right at this table to talk about, you guys can now charge the insurance companies back. So now what we'll do is we'll do this, we'll get an exchange from you, 
we'll keep it at your facility, the recycling facility, and now they're able to charge the, in, the insurance company back for the disposal of it, and it's worked out great. This is a problem that's gonna continue and get worse because we're focusing so much on battery power. Um, I think it's great that we're doing it, but we really have to take a, a step back and look at the bigger picture on how we're gonna keep people safe. Yeah, I think, I mean, with your leadership and your team, and you talked about Deputy Albanese, um, and he's been phenomenal. He really has. Mm -hmm. he's, he's found money that we never thought yeah. would even exist. You know, exactly. it benefits the residents and business owners of the city of Brockton, but your whole team as well. And adding new uh, staff and team members, men and women, to the force, don't you have something coming up next month? We do. So we, when I took over, our numbers were down were significantly in recruiting in regards to who was taking the civil service test. Or one of our biggest, one of our biggest bypasses is people that don't live here trying to get jobs here. And that's all well and good, but Brockton residents should come first. Mm -hmm. So we actually, in the last two years, this will be the third year, and we're going to do it August 21st at f between 4 and 6 at the West, Guy West, West Side Library. And you can come in. We're actually, Brianna Ward, the executive um, the um, Deputy Director of Civil Services Civil coming service. down. Yep. She came last, last year as well. Year. Yep. Yep. I introduced you to her. Yep. And, and any questions anyone has about anything to do with civil service, taking a fire job, even if they have questions about taking the police, police whatever it is, yep. we have someone there who's an official. We want people, obviously, the, 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 the deadline to sign up for the exam is August 29th. So we try to do it about a week ahead of time yep. so that people can, they're not going to forget about it. And then the exam is in August, October. But we've, we've had an 18.4% increase in people taking the exam. Brockton City residents, that's the whole idea behind civil service, is making sure we get city jobs for city kids. And that's really worked out well. Well, I want to thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to pivot over to, to Chief Perez. I mean, because what you're doing right now, Chief, is is you're multitasking a lot, right? You're working with our friends at the state police and some of our federal officials. But also, a lot of people don't know, the three commuter stops in the city of Brockton. So let's talk about Campello and Montello. Those parking lots are under whose authority? The MBTA. MBTA. So transit police, you're working with them as well. And I know Council President Susan DeCastro has been an advocate working with you. Um, you're doing a lot right now to try to curtail the increase of the ATVs and the mini bikes, right? And it's not unique to Brockton. It's happening everywhere, Correct. cities and towns and mm -hmm. Massachusetts and around the country. What are some of the mechanisms that you could tell the viewers that you as the chief have been working on to, tr to try to really bring that in. So as you know, Mayor, when um, I first took over as chief of your office, um, I worked together with the city council and the law department to actually create a recreational vehicle ordinance. And so what the ordinance is another tool for our officers to use um, and try to address this very complex issue, right? This, like you rightly said, this is not a Brockton issue only. This is throughout the state and this is across the country. And it's been some, and it's something that's been going on for a while. So we are definitely working with the MBTA, the Mass State Police, in, in trying to address this issue. As you know, we, everybody wants to avoid having a tragedy like what we just had recently about two weeks ago with Wareham, where two juveniles uh, ended up being killed on a dirt bike. So um, the city ordinance allows us to basically fine violators, but also has me a mechanism there for gas stations. So not only are we looking to address um, the riders and basically enforce the law, but also the gas stations. So gas stations are not allowed to sell uh, fuel to anybody that's under 18 or an ATV um, driving up to acquire food, they're also subject to being fined based on this ordinance. And as a informative talk, trying to educate the public on that and trying to ed educate the gas stations on that, we actually had our cadets hand deliver, you know, a copy of the ordinance and basically educate those gas stations, every single gas station in the city, and saying, hey, this is your also, this is subject to you, to enforcement on for you. So we're taking um, not only a um, education piece to that, but also uh, enforcement, right? We're going to enforce all the mass laws that we can. Yep. We're going to enforce the city ordinance. We're also um, going to take a look at investigative tools that we have to be able to go through social media and identify people and charge them criminally if applicable. That's right. So um, we're working with all our partners and we're going to continue to do so in trying to mitigate this, um, this situation. At the end of the day, we want our pedestrians to be safe. We want um, our operators to be safe and people need to obey the rules of, of the road. And we want our law, law enforcement to be mm -hmm. safe as well. And, and we, we just had a tragedy on Route 24. Mm -hmm. um, and again, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't know, but the Brockton Fire Department reports to that section of 24 yes. that's in the, in the confines of the city boundaries. And 
you know, there was a, a mini bike uh, individual that was yes. uh, a fatality yes. uh, on Route 24, not a Brockton resident, but nonetheless, yep. just tragic. Um, so we'll shift to some really wonderful news, and I want to thank both of you. So we're doing a building <laughs> that's going to house four departments, right? It's going to be our IT department, mm -hmm. right? Informational technology is going to leave Brockton High from the core building. Mm -hmm. uh, BEMA, which is Brockton Emergency Management, is going to leave our War Memorial building and then police and fire. And we have a new public safety building and it's going to happen in two years time, right? We're going to cut that ribbon. You're going to move into your new place. You're going to move into your new place. Steve Hook will move in. Ted Moderos will move in. What were your thoughts? We did the groundbreaking just a week and a half ago. What were some of your thoughts? And I'll start with you, Chief Perez. So I think that this is a is great for the city. I think that this is outstanding. And I think that it's just going to foster uh, more collaboration between FIA, BEMA, and uh, streamline kind of communication. We're all in the same mm -hmm. building. Yeah. Ease of, you know, communication and just collaborative efforts. At the end of the day, I think, you know, we want this, the public to be safe. Yeah, it's going to be and great. So, and it's and a I, city block. A lot of people don't know. I mean, we took friendly takings. The city acquired three buildings, right? 99 Warren Ave and 21 Highland Street. So we're literally going from Highland all the way to West Elm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge huge distance, but it's going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome building. Mm -hmm. State of the art. We're all going to be proud of it. I think the men and women that work there are going to love it, but the visitors are. It's going to be customer friendly as well. What, what are your thoughts, Chief? So I, I think it's great. I think you, you talk about the four agencies that are moving in there. We work with the police all the time. We work with emergency management. Yep. People ask, how did IT get involved? I think people don't realize how dependent the That's chief and I are on IT and what goes on our records are dispatching everything. So it works out well having them under that same roof. I think it's awesome. I, I know I spoke at the ground broke, breaking a little bit about the fact that just the efficiency, I'm all the way up the west side. Um, the fire prevention people are downtown. Mm -hmm. The shop is over, you know, there's so many different places, things with us in different places. That's all well and good, but I think too, when we design this building, the whole thing with PFAS and all the carcinogens, I know our members are, are involved in now. There is the way, it's not necessarily a clean building, but the way now that when, when our members have a fire, they have an incident, they, they have PFAS from the gear and then all the carcinogens from the fire, they come back, there's a whole way that they can actually shower, get ready, go, so you go in dirty and you come out clean. Yep. And there's a whole process in the fire service how that happens now, but um, right now we have, three buildings that were built in the right around 1900, 1884, 1888. Exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> so, so the technology is not, it would cost too much money to put that So in those buildings. So now bringing that all in and being able to really move forward, I think it's, it's you know, obviously under your leadership, you, you, I know you pushed this right from the beginning, which Absolutely. has been huge. Um, and, and it really is going to make a big difference, I know, for all of us. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and, it's and again, a both of you, yeah, I mean, thank yes. you both. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I've pushed it, but you, you both have supported it. And, um, you know, one thing is, is is open communication, transparency. We've been working together on this for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's two years time. Um, I do want the viewers to know that you're going to have a little bit of some detours between now and we cut that ribbon, right? Warren Ave, which is one way from Pleasant Street to Belmont Street, uh, is going to be switched to two-way traffic for fire apparatus and police apparatus as well. So, you know, you got, are going to have to deal with some inconvenience. I deal with it and Chief does and Chief does. but. Honestly, it's going to be worth worth these struggles. It's going to be great. The War Memorial is being invested millions of dollars from ARPA money, the American Rescue money. Uh, there's a there's a projection of an upgrade over at the Boys and Girls Club. City Hall is going to have millions of dollars invested in it as well. The Mary Cruz Kennedy Senior Center counts on aging downtown near St. Patrick's and the YMCA, millions of dollars again because of the federal money we're receiving. So we're investing money, but the, the tangible results are gonna be seen in, in short order. So again, I wanna thank you both. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Your, your repeat guests, right? Yeah. Not everybody's a repeat <laughs> guest, but I love when you come on. I wanna thank both of you for your leadership, for thank your you. friendships, for your passion to make Brockton a better place for all. Uh, and again, I just wanna thank you both. And it's been my, my pleasure to have Chief Brenda Perez from the Police Department, Chief Brian Idelli from the Fire Department as my guest on the, uh, the episode about Brockton. And you'll have a, a guest uh, joining us. I'm not gonna tell you who, but you're gonna be very impressed with the next guest as well. But Chief and Chief, thank you for what thank you do each and every day. Thank you. Bye-bye everybody, thank you.